Okay, so we're going to go ahead and uh, demonstrate rabbit processing. When we say processing, we're not talking like, uh, you know, doing something with their ears and teeth and when we think about processing baby pigs or something like that. We're going to be talking about the actual harvest uh, and then further processing ready to actually have this as a, um, a meat product. So we've gone ahead and already used the rabbit ringer uh, down here on the end. We have the animal hanging up by uh, the rear legs. The head has been removed. It's been exsanguinated. The blood's been removed. So we're going to go ahead and, and just walk through the process of removing the hide and the organs and uh, the rest of the processing. One of the things that we uh, see a lot because the rabbits have such very fine um, hair is that um, it's really difficult to keep the hair out of the process. And other, other species, it's, it's pretty easy to do. Um, uh, or quite a bit easier to do than it is with the rabbits, but um, it's just kind of tough to, to get started. So we'll go ahead and we'll make a, uh, an incision or a, a pathway cut down through the inside of the legs toward the center of the flank. Uh, and I do that on both sides. Continue to cut that down. And I'm pulling away from the meat, so it looks like I'm cutting right down on top of the muscle, but I'm actually making kind of a little tented area. Uh, and then I can kind of maneuver this down to cut through. I'm going to go ahead and then cut through the center portion here. And expose that and expose that belly fat. You can see the belly fat uh, down inside of here. Um, then we'll go ahead and take and cut back toward the rear. And once we get a good opening, we can then um, do a lot of pulling. Their hide attachment isn't super strong, so we can pull a lot of this hide away. Um, in sheep, when we're processing sheep, we have to use a little bit of a different technique, but um, we can pull these hides pretty well once we get a cut uh, all the way around. Again, the hair is just kind of part of the process is that uh, there's a lot more cleaning involved um, when we're working with rabbits than there is when we're working with some of the other species because this hair will eventually just, it just kind of gets places and when we are done processing, there's a lot of cleanup uh, to make sure that you don't have any of that hair in the final product. You can see how we can pull those. We get in behind the tail, pull down. Rehang that leg. Finally get to this point and we can just invert this hide. We do put some pressure on on the animal itself as we do this so sometimes you'll see the as you did with that one saw the bladder go ahead and start to empty and such so oh help them from Alex there yeah, tighten those, tighten those up. And he was stubborn before and he's still stubborn. We'll go ahead and reach through. And we try to remove this all in one, in one piece if we can. Uh, we get to the end. We use these specialized printing shears that we use just for this process to cut those front legs. And then that's removed. You can, you can keep that pelt. Um, it can be tanned. Uh, there are a lot of different recipes out on the internet. What I've noticed is that it, it turns out to be a whole lot more work than uh, the benefit that you, get, that you get from it. It is still soft. So um, We'll go ahead and um, remove the testicles or what was there of that has come through. Um, the next thing that we got to do is make a small incision uh, and split the pelvic bone. Now one thing, remember they have a pelletized feces, so with that pelletized feces we don't have to worry about that loose manure getting all over the place so much. But we'll make a midline incision there and we'll go ahead and deliver the uh, organs. I like to get in at this point and get behind the kidneys, pull those kidneys out. You can see the kidney, uh, kidney there, it looks like a kidney bean. We'll pull the kidneys. We'll take a look at all of these different organs to make sure that they're, they're healthy. I also pull the fat along with those organs if I can, as I look at them. 
as the other kidney. Things look uniform in color. Don't see any spots. Don't see any discolorations. There's the urinary, urinary uh, bladder. Um, we tried to go ahead and pinch up as high as possible on that. I'll strip that down and hold that away. I want to leave that intact. I don't want to. I don't want that urine to uh, infect our uh, our final carcass. Now, because I went and split the center, I can grab the bung from the middle, and there's the intestine right there. And I'll pull this entire digestive tract up and out together. I make sure that I grab uh, the liver, the entire uh, lower portion below the diaphragm, and all of the organs that are there. You can see the liver. Liver's in really good shape. Four lobes of the liver. You can see the gallbladder there on the bottom. Good color. No uh, pock marking, anything like that. We'll remove that, set that aside, take a look at it. This is their uh, stomach. You can see that large pouch of the stomach right there. Uh, we have some mesentery fat that lays over the top of that. And inside the mesentery fat is this organ right here that's called the spleen. So the spleen sits right on top of uh, the stomach. You can see this is the upper portion or the, uh, the esophagus. Goes down into the stomach, out of the stomach, and into to the uh, lower portion of the digestive tract. Large intestines, large bowel, small bowel. Um, we do have a cecum. Uh, cecum is finished up. A blind pouch. Gotta have this all laid out. This large portion right here is the cecum. So you can see the different textures. You can see the mesentery there. That's where all the exchange of nutrients goes across that veination and blood. Um, so that's the digestive tract, what's in the abdominal cavity. Um, then we'll cut through, and I just break through the, um, the breastbone, and I'll split up and through the diaphragm, and on the other side of that is the lungs. We'll go ahead and grab that. We call that the pluck, and it's the, the heart and the lungs together. Um, some people will say, and I didn't pull the, uh, the trachea, um, but they'll call this the elephant because a lot of times that trachea will hang down here and it'll look like an elephant with the two big ears. Uh, I cut through the lungs. Lungs are a little bit, um, a little bit spotted. Looks like they might have had some uh, and really, really like, probably had a respiratory infection. I noticed this rabbit had uh, a little bit of a sniffle. Um, you can see the heart. If you look at the heart really closely and you can actually see the heart and it's moving back and forth inside of a sac, that's the pericardium. Uh, so the pericardium is good and strong, it's clear liquid, um, everything looks good with the heart. I don't see any, any health problems that might have been associated um, with this rabbit. We'll go ahead and split down through the chest um, all the way and out through the front. And we'll go ahead and start removing any soft tissue that's in there. Uh, Alex is going to have the hardest part job for the day. And that's going through and removing all the fat, removing all of the hair, and, and getting through all of the, those issues. When we're getting ready to uh, uh, be done and, and pass this off, we'll go ahead and cut this again at the, at the lower leg. There's the carcass. Uh, carcass can be quartered. Uh, a lot of the meat is going to come out of that, that rear portion of the rabbit. Again, you can see all the hair and everything that's just going to have to be cleaned. Uh, go back a once over with a knife. We'll put this into an overflow bin and let water flow over the top of it, keep it good and moist while uh, we also get rid of all that hair and everything else. And this can go ahead and be packaged.